Hi, everyone. Richard Robbins here. Well, the numbers are in for August, so I want to take you through what's going on in the real estate market. So a few things I want to do with you today. Number one, I want to talk about lending rates. We're having some changes. Number two, I want to talk to you about what's going on in the Toronto market because it is the market with the biggest shift that is taking place. And then number three, what I want to do is I want to share what's going on right across Canada in all of the major markets. So first of all, as I'm recording this, it was yesterday when the Bank of Canada raised their prime lending rate by a quarter of a point. It's now at 1%. That is obviously going to have an effect on lending rates, on mortgage rates. Now, why would they put it up? Well, let's face it. The second quarter, our GDP went up by 4.5%, was way more than expected. We've had strong job growth that's been taking place. So I think generally the economy has been very, very good. So Bank of Canada is saying, well, you know, how do we sort of just, just slow it down a little bit? You know, inflation is still below 2%. So generally speaking, if you look at all of the markers, we right now are in great shape here in Canada. Now, with the rise in rates, what you might see is you might see some buyers get out there right away that have locked in rates, and you might have, over the next little while, sort of a flurry of buyers buying to take advantage of that, and then after that, everybody's got to deal with what the new lending rates are. Okay, so let's look at the market. So let's look at Toronto. So Toronto Real Estate Board, as we know, back in uh, the spring, we had that 15% foreign buyer tax. Obviously, we had the, the, the rate go up in the spring, went up another quarter of a point in September. So there's a lot of things going on right now, and everybody's wondering what's happening in the market. Well, I'm going to tell you, in August, it actually recovered fairly well. I've got some very positive news for you. So look at this. If we go look, we look at all the sales, and this is the Greater Toronto Real Estate Board, so this takes in a very large area. So you can see what's going on. But in July, we had 5,900 sales. We had 6,357 in August. Active listings, we had 18,751 in July, and we're down to 16,419. Now, here's the big number that I follow. I've talked to you about this before. Months of inventory. Remember, price is going to be determined by supply and demand. More supply we have, lower demand, prices are going to weaken. Okay, Low supply, strong demand, prices are going to go up. So if we go back and we look in January, we had one month of inventory. So what that means, look at active listings at the end of the month were 5,000, sales were 5,100. See, one month, we we're basically selling everything that was coming on the market that particular month. So you look at that and you say, then it started to go down. You can see at the end of the month, we had 5,400 listings, 8,000 sales. Okay, pretty incredible. So there's a lot of new listings coming on that was causing us to have more sales, which was great. We had no supply. So what was going on with prices? 770, 876. Look at this. Same thing, up to 916. You can see days on the market is starting to shrink. Then all of a sudden, what happens? Foreign buyer tax comes in. Everything starts to change a little bit. It was in April when it came in. We did 11,000 sales. You can see the listings now, 1.1 month of inventory. You know, price up a little wee bit. Then look what happened in May. Our sales went down. Look what happened to month of inventory, 1.8. 2.5, and we went to 3.1 in July, but look at this, 2.6 in August. So yes, you can see prices are weakening, generally speaking. There's condos that are still going up, probably townhouses are still rising, but detached are going down. So the higher price the house, okay, then that's where your market is going to change first. That's where they're going to have the most difficulty, and that's where you're going to see prices start to go down first. But the lower end stuff right now is still very, very active. So you got a bunch of micro markets. But look at this. You can see prices are slipping a little bit. Here's what I love right here. I love the idea that all of a sudden our inventory is starting to go down a little bit. Now, what is going to happen in the fall? Let's face it. It's anybody's guess but I believe you're gonna to start to see this continue to slip a little bit, which is good for us. But look at this. If we go back and we look at what's happening in a year. So August 16, August 17, you can see sales are down by 35%, active listings up by 65%, and average price is just up 
okay, over the same period last year. So yes, we've had a lot of changes, but we still have a very healthy market. Let me show you this. If we go right across Canada, now this is months of inventory. Montreal is operating around 7.8 months of inventory. Nova Scotia, 6.9 months of inventory. Edmonton, 5.5. Calgary, 4.1. Ottawa, 3. Vancouver, 2.9. And Toronto, 2.6. So in other words, Toronto, even with everything that's going on, is still the strongest market in Canada. So here's the message. If I look right across Canada, generally speaking, and by the, by the way, these are dropping right here. So these are actually getting a little bit stronger, these markets right here. So what I want to say to you, if we look right across Canada, generally speaking, we got an incredible economy. We got a real decent real estate market almost everywhere, a little weaker in these areas, but still pretty good. But I look at this. I say, okay, yes, we got a lot going on, but let's not get confused by the truth. And here's what the truth is. The truth is, even with all the changes that have taken place in Toronto, all the changes that took place last year in Vancouver, even with what went on in Alberta, with obviously the oil prices, you want to know something? We have an unbelievable real estate market. And I'll be honest with you, I would take this real estate market as an agent. I would prefer to work on this one right here than one that only has one month of inventory. Because now what it is, it's a healthy market. Now, do you have to change some of your strategies? Do you have to develop new skills? Do you have to change some of your dialogues to help people understand why they should be buying and selling? And of course, the answer is yes. Not everybody should be on the market right now, but some people have to sell. That means you got to price a little better, right? Same thing with buyers. Is it a good time to buy? I think it's a wonderful time to buy right now because they got more to choose from probably prices are going to be a little bit more flexible. There's some sellers that have to sell because they've already bought. So I look and say it's still a wonderful time. And even with the Bank of Canada rate at 1%, it's still low. So anyway, wanted to share that message with you, but don't get confused by what you read in the newspapers. Because if we believe what's in the newspapers, we would think the bottom is falling out of the market, and I'm telling you our economy is going to crumble. And I can honestly say, not that I'm an economist, but I can honestly say, I see no indications of that at all. All I see is a healthy economy and a healthy real estate market. I hope this was helpful. And remember, everybody, it's a beautiful life. Make it count.